Hey, what is going on YouTube? In this video, we are going to quickly cover various commands that you may use when performing a penetration test to learn more about the machine that you are scanning. We are going to perform a port scan on a vulnerable machine using Metasploitable 2. So with that, let's get started. So as you can see here, we have our scanning machine. We are using, like I said in the intro, Metasploitable 2, which already has ports and services already exposed to us. I had spun up a Docker container. You could find that here on docker.com or on the Docker Hub. Here's the container that we are using today. Pretty straightforward. Maybe in another video, if requested, I could cover how to install Docker and pull this up. But in the meantime, I'm going to assume that you already know how to do that. So on the right terminal here is where we have the Metasploitable 2 currently running. So the reason why I have it pulled up is I want to know what IP address is on this machine or on this container, and it is routable through this um, virtual machine over here that we are running, Parrot. So we got 172.17.0.2. So if we go over here and ping that, you can see that we are able to communicate with this container. So the first scan that we are going to perform is just a basic Nmap scan with no options enabled. To do that, we will use the following command. That's going to be Nmap and then the IP address 172.17.0.2. Go ahead and execute that. As you can see here, once that scan is completed, if you scroll up to the top, you will notice that we have the port column, the state, and the service. And then also in the port column, separated by the forward slash, we have the protocol, which is TCP. I bring this up because with the options that we have enabled, which is none in this scan, we are only scanning the top thousand common ports, and that is only looking for TCP, which is what we see here down from 21, and then it will skip, obviously, depending on if the ports open or close or if it is considered common. And those are all the common ports that it scans with that default option. Knowing that, if we wanted to scan all of the ports on this machine, let's say maybe ports outside of the common 1000 that are listed, we could go ahead and run nmap p dash and then the IP address. So this is pretty much specifying that we want to run a port scan on the very first port into the very last, which is 65,535. And as you can see here, it opened up a few more, or maybe only one more compared to the first scan, which is 39,969. From there, let's say maybe you want to scan a specific port. You could go ahead and do that again using the dash P option and then specifying that specific port that we wanted. And as you can see here, we scan port 4444 and that is closed on this IP address that we had specified. This also applies for a range of ports that we would like to scan. So for instance, maybe we want to scan 4,444 to 8,888. You can go ahead and do that just like that. Specify nmap dash port, specify the range and the IP address. And as you can see here, these are all the ports that are open in that range. Now that we kind of got the basic idea of scanning the various ports on this machine, starting out with a basic common top 1,000 port scan, and then scanning each individual port on this machine, which is 65,000 or even scanning a range or even scanning an individual port. From there, now that we have a range of ports or a list of ports that are open, maybe we want to get more information about that port. So to do so, we will use the dash SV option. And excuse me, in my previous scans, usually good practice is to do nmap followed by the target and then the options, as you can see here. So this is for scanning for the version and we are specifying port 80, and we're going to specify dash SV for determining what version is running on port 80. Once that is complete, you can see that the Apache version is 2.2.8. And then if we scrolled up and looked at the previous scan, we will notice that we were only given HTTP, which is a service. And then with the dash SV, we were able to get a little bit more information on port 80. Another common command that you may use or another option that you may use when scanning your machine is going to be dash sc which runs default scripts to get more information about the target that you are scanning so for example you will see that after running the command 
nmap ip address dash sc you'll get the various information associated with running the default scripts and within nmap so for example one of the things that it provides is like vulnerability information or service information more service information here's an example for uh, ftp running on port 21 we find out the server status one thing that we also notice which is not very common in the real world but in the ctf world especially in the easier levels you will find that anonymous ftp login is allowed so with that we could log into this ftp server with the anonymous username and no password and maybe potentially get files or information from that server uh, we'll get host keys ciphers so on and so forth so commonly what I will run, especially within these penetration tests or these uh, capture the flags or hack the box machines, what I will kind of do is run an nmap scan, specify the target, then I will use the dash sc, dash sv, which will again enumerate the versions. And then another command that we haven't discussed yet will be oa, and this will output the result of the nmap scan into various formats, which I will highlight in a second. Once that has com been completed, go ahead and list out the contents of this directory. And obviously this is not where usually you would put it. Obviously maybe it would be in another directory that you had created for the scan. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we just placed it in our home directory. As you can see here, the three, actually to make this simple, we'll just make another one. And as you can see here, the nmap will output three different variations of that scan result. As you could see, we have the nmap, which is human readable, XML, which is machine readable, and then G, which is greppable format, just a, a format that is easier to use with grep. Before closing out this video, I wanted to highlight one thing that I have been doing when I am scanning my machines. Um, so if we read that out, We have a lot of information here, obviously, um, between the SC and the dash SV for the versions and the, de the default scripts that are running. Um, so maybe uh, when I'm just performing my scans, I just kind of want to get an idea exactly what service is running instead of reading through all of that. What I kind of do lately, is I'll go ahead and read that out and then I'll just grab this uh, pattern. And then I'll output this pattern into, let's say, services.txt. It can help if I would close it out. Now, if we read the services.txt, now we will just get the port associated with that and the version instead of getting all of this. Um, again, this is still here, obviously, so we could get in here and look at all the details that is associated with it. But this is just a quick way to kind of get the versions that are associated with it from that format that we had saved. So that's going to close out today's video. This was just a quick highlight of the various commands that you could use within Nmap to perform during your penetration tests or scanning your hack the box or capture the flag machines. There's a lot more that's coming this way. This is some of the basics, some of the things that I do at the very beginning of my scans. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you need any help with anything else, or if you have any other ideas for another video, just let me know in the comments below. Drop a like, subscribe for more, and as always, never stop learning.